Hey, what up, y'all? It's Knowledge the Raven. Knowledge. 2468 coming at you. Brother Knowledge. Uh, man, I'm still on the uh, the challenge for uh, Acts. Uh, reading the book of Acts with my brother Derek Whitehorn. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a, a, a great journey so far. And I know that it's going to bless somebody, man. But we stand on the challenge. And I had some challenges today, man. Um, you know, I found out that one of my uh, my YouTube videos that I had posted was actually uh, taken down. What's up, nephew? <laughs> uh, it's funny that you're watching me and you're outside. But uh, one of my YouTube videos got taken down because um, I had posted a video of me somewhere and the lady got upset because I had 85 views for the content that was from her conference. So she basically told her that it was a copyright infringement and she uh, had YouTube remove the video, which I mean, I ain't tripping through, you know, the 85 views, it don't hurt my pocket. You know, you can have that if you're gonna post your video. I done already been to your YouTube channel and I see that you only got five subscribers and you know, maybe 10 or 12 views on each video. Not tripping, that, you can have that. You know, like I said, I'm not doing anything wrong and I'm not even finna, you know, challenge that at the end of the day, man. So what I'm saying is, is that people, you know, that claim that they're uh, followers of Christ, uh, you know, s say certain things, but their actions speak otherwise. I mean, because I got the text messages of her, um, you know, basically saying stuff towards me and like, oh, well, you need to stop this and you need to stop this or I'm going to sue you and this, this and that. I'm like, man. Do what you got to do. At the end of the day, I ain't hurt nobody. I ain't do nothing wrong. So, you know, hey, she took the video down. And that's cool. Hey, ain't no problem, man. You you contacted YouTube and you told them I've done something that I really didn't do because you didn't even say nothing about it. We ain't had no contract on it. There was nothing that was said that that needed to be done. But you did it anyway. So you can have it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no copyright. You ain't had no written paperwork. You ain't had none of that. And I'm not even going to challenge YouTube on a video because the 85 is not hurting me. I got more views than that on one video. So, uh, madam, you can have it. Um, but uh, I'm going to be reading the Father's Heart Ministry like, you know, always because I love the Father's Heart Ministry. It's very touching. It's always something uh, positive. And uh, it's, it always resonates, you know, with everyone, some people. Um, so... Of course, y'all know we always start out with prayer. Uh, you know, Father, we thank you for uh, allowing us to live and see another day. We thank you for who you are and what you've done and what you continue to do for each one of us, Father God. I pray that this word that comes forth today, that it helps someone, Father. And I thank you for, you know, everything that transpired today to uh, show us um, the way, Father God, to show us that we don't need to get angry or frustrated or do anything out of character, Father God, that's not like you but just to operate in love. So at the end of the day, that's what we, um, we're, we're, we're priding ourselves on is just the love, Father God, the love that you show us, the love that you um, have given each, each and every one of us, your children, Father God. And uh, I just pray for the Holy Spirit to give uh, those that are watching and even myself the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding of what the word says today. In Jesus, or Yeshua's mighty, holy, precious name, we pray. Amen. And the reason I said, uh, you know, Yeshua, because I know about Yeshua, I know about Yeshua HaMashiach, um, and uh, I do know about Jesus as well. So for those that, um, you know, watching, hey, whatever name you want to use, it's up to you. But for me, you know, I, I use Jesus sometimes, and then sometimes I use Yeshua HaMashiach. Um, so it says, the Father says today. Is today the fourth? Yeah, today. Got you. Try to get me. All right. The Father says today, the integrity of my kingdom is maintaining your right before my throne. The enemy has accused and the enemy has slandered, but your great advocate stands to educate, to uh, adjudicate, I'm sorry, adjudicate you and see you go free. I am the God who keeps your foot from sliding into the abyss of disappointment. For I have examined you 
and found the faith in your heart. And the one thing in the earth I am looking for to show my greatness. Don't look for the assault of hell that will never reach you. My loving kindness is surely following you and tracking you down for upgrade, increase, and promotion. So the father says, again, don't look for the assault of hell that will never reach you. For God's people, hell will, will never reach you. But his loving kindness is surely following us and tracking us down for upgrade and increase and a promotion. My blessing in your life isn't about everything right or satisfying the opinion of those critics who never have anything good to say unless it's in their own opinion of themselves. The vain talkers are defeated and removed. The whisperer's mouth is stopped and the congregation of the wicked is shut down and their lies are stifled and muzzled on your behalf. Don't give in to worry or fear. Don't be preoccupied with what your uh, detractors are saying or doing. For what I am listening, for what I'm listening, listening to is the voice of your praise in your mouth and worship in your heart. My angels surround you and protect you to defend every aspect of your life. Your eye will see of my faithfulness and experience my fierce love that carries you and uh, militates your vision until the fullness of what I put in your heart is manifested and established. And uh, man, you know, uh, thank y'all for joining in uh, for my viewers. Um, what that's basically saying is, man, don't focus on what people are saying about you or what they're trying to uh, bring up, but focus on what the father tells you about you. Focus on where he's taking you, where he's promoting you to. Don't don't focus on the negative. Focus on the positive, because I, I guarantee you the, uh, the the good outweighs the bad and they kind of balance each other out. So um, when we go over now, that was the father's heart ministry. But when we go over to Acts chapter four, because that's the challenge that we're in. Uh, let me go there real quick. Give me one second. There it is. Acts chapter four. And it's like 37 verses long. What's good, bro? Just uh, just bringing the word, man. You know, my brother, um, Derek Whitehorn on uh, on Facebook, he, he wants us to do a challenge uh, of reading a chapter out of Acts every single day. So we're on the fourth chapter today. Um, so the, this next chapter, this chapter four is about when uh, Peter and John, they get arrested for uh, preaching and teaching the word and uh, basically for healing a man who was uh, lame or crippled. You know, they get arrested for that. And this is what happens. So Peter and John, they get arrested. That's the, the, the nutshell of it. And we're reading from the NASB. Um, As they were speaking to the people, the priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them, being gratefully disturbed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, uh, Yeshua, the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in jail until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the message believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. See, what happened at this point in time is the Sadducees and the Pharisees, again, they didn't like the preaching and teaching of the word. They didn't like it because it went against what they were teaching. You know, they still didn't believe. So on the next day, their rulers and elders and the scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem. And uh, how you say the name? Anas, the high priest was there and Caiaphas and John and uh, Alexander and all who were of high priestly descent. So the elders of the church. Um, when they had placed them in the center, they began to inquire, by what power or in what name have you done this? They're asking Peter and John, like, by what power uh, were you able to do this? And in what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today, for a benefit done to a sick man 
as to how this man has been made well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Nazarene who you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands here before you in good health. So now Peter is telling him, He's standing before you. This lame man, this crippled man that you all saw is now standing before you because of the power of the Holy Spirit. The one that you crucified, the one that you said you didn't believe in, you didn't believe um, uh, was uh, heaven sent. The one that you killed by the power that he has given us. By his name. He is the stone which was rejected by you. By the stone, they mean uh, the rock, you know, as you know, you heard the song that says Jesus is the rock. Yeshua is the rock. Um, he is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has that has been given among men by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus, or for some, Yeshua HaMashiach. And you can go and study that for yourself. You can go and look that name up and it will give you the specifics of what it means and why that is the name. Um, and that's, that's Eastern civilization and then you have Western civilization. So we learned over here in the West, in the Western civilization that his name is Jesus. But over in the Eastern civilization, they know him as Yeshua. Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, which is uh, Hebrew. Now, as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Yeshua. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say in reply. But when they, see, they saw the man, the man standing there, the man that has been sitting outside the temple, outside the beautiful gate. That man had been standing right before them, praising and singing, you know, and just giving all praise to God because he could now walk something that he wasn't able to do before. But when they had ordered them to leave the council. OK, what's going on here? When they had ordered them to leave the council they began to confer with one another. They began to talk to one another, saying, what shall we do with these men? What shall we do with Peter and John? Like, what shall we do with them? Why are they here? What can we do with them? For the fact that a noteworthy miracle has taken place through them is apparent to all who live in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. So they said, we, we, can't, we can't deny that a miracle just happened. We can't deny that because this man that we're seeing is not uh, that we knew that was lame and was crippled is now standing before us. And the people of Jerusalem know this as well. So what can we do to these men? So they said, but so that will not, but so that will not spread any further among the people. Let us warn them to speak no longer to any man in this name. So they, they basically said, we're going to tell them, we're going to warn them that you must not speak uh, in Yeshua's name. You must not do anything else in his name. And then here's the thing. And when they said, and when they had summoned them, they commanded them. So when they had called them back, now they were talking amongst one another about what they were going to do to Peter and John. But when they called them back, summoned, when they called them back, this is what they told Peter and John. They commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Yeshua. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. When they had threatened them further, they let them go, finding no bias, or I'm sorry, finding no basis on which to punish them. So now Peter and John are saying like, Y'all can judge us all you want, but we not finna be uh, we not finna stop what we doing because we know this. We have heard and seen and witnessed this, and we are held accountable for what we do. So if you gonna kill us, 
whatever. But when we go to our judge, like you can, basically they're saying you can kill us, you can kill our bodies, but you can't kill our soul. So when they uh, had threatened them further, let them, uh, they let them go. So they had threatened them again, like, don't do this. If you do this, this is what will happen. Finding no basis on which to punish them on account of the people because they were all glorifying God for what they for what had just happened. So all the people were glorifying God because it was a miracle. For the man was more than 40 years old on whom the miracle of healing had been performed. Now, this man had been crippled for over 40 years and now he can walk. When they had been released, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord and said, O oh Lord, it is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of our father David, your servant said, why did the Gentiles rage? And the apostles, I mean, and the people devise futile things. The king of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Now, what that's saying is you got to go study who the Gentiles are. You got to know who the Gentiles are. See, they told us that we were the Gentiles. When I say we, the people of color, they told us we are the Gentiles. But the Gentiles are the ones who call themselves Jewish. Now, you got to go study. Now, you have to go and study this stuff. Go and look at, um, what is it? Is it Genesis? I want to say Genesis uh, chapter 10. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Genesis chapter 10. Um where it uh, says the sons of Noah, which is Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And you want to go look them up. And um, let me see if I make sure that it's Genesis. Genesis chapter 10. Yep. Genesis chapter 10. Uh, ch uh, chapter 10, the descendants of Noah. And you want to study that and you want to research that. But let's um, finish up at Acts chapter four, because I'm not—I I don't want to get you off on this one. But I'm telling you, that studying is the best thing that you can do. Uh, where are we at? Okay, for truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Yeshua, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence. So now, um, to me, they're praying to God. When I'm looking at this, I, it's, they're speaking to God. While you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Yeshua. And when they had prayed, see, they did. And when they were praying, the place where they had gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. They began to speak the word of God with boldness while they were praying. So all these people began to speak the word of God with boldness, sharing among believers and the congregation of those who believe were one heart and soul. And not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Yeshua and abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person among them for all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles feet and they would be distributed to each as any had need. So they began to help one another. They began to 
um, give things to one another because of the word of God. They began to help each other and they would give them to the apostles and the apostles would then distribute everything out to those who had need of it. And this is how it's actually supposed to work. This is how it's supposed to work, but it hasn't been going that way, but it's going to, I guarantee you, it's going to start happening. Now, Joseph, a Levite of uh, Seraphim birth, who was also called Barnabas by the apostles, which translated means son of encouragement and who owned a tract of land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet. It began to take place. It, it was a shift that was going on. So, uh, man, again, go back and study this for yourself, you know, and always ask for the knowledge and wisdom and understanding so you can get an understanding of what you're reading. You know, don't just take my word for it because you may hear something else that uh, may resonate in you. And, you know, I just pray that um, for those that are watching the video that you begin to um, accept the challenge with us because um, tomorrow we'll be starting on chapter five, Acts chapter five, and it's going to get deep because Acts chapter five uh, talks about the fate of Ananias and uh, Se uh, how do you say her name? Uh, Sapphira. So it talks about the fate of Ananias and Sapphira. You want to go study that, man. It's, it's the whole book of Acts is the book of the apostles. Check it out, man. You know, again, um, this is going to be on YouTube. This is on my YouTube channel at Knowledge the Raven 2468. That's Knowledge D A R A V E N 2468. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, please share it with your family, your friends, those who uh, may want to hear a word. Man, let's, let's spread the message. Let's spread the gospel. I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.